Hello, hello. Welcome to the replay. <laughs> I hope this blesses you. Grab your Bible, grab your notebook. Um, share this with your sister in Christ, your cousin, your girlfriend, your auntie and them. Hello, everyone. Oh, I forgot I need to take my title here. I have not been live in so long. Um, but this is going to bless you because I've already prayed. I pray for everyone that's going to be here. Um, I pray for the Lord to be glorified. Um, so my question for you on today is, are you ready? Not, not only are you ready, but are you really ready? Are you really ready for the man you've been praying for? Are you really ready? And this is a question that I'm going to go into detail biblically to help you to answer. But this is a question that is going to require you to be honest with yourself. It might make you a little uncomfortable, but um, just know that um, growth, most of the time growth is uncomfortable. Most of the time, self-reflection, self-location, being honest with yourself, that is uncomfortable. But, oh, you see my paint swatches. It, excuse my paint um, samples on the wall. I can't, it, it's, my, my, my office is going to be none of those colors, by the way. Because <laughs> all of them was way too dark. But they're up there for right now. Okay, let me get my phone set up. Uh, if you have your Bible, great. If not, it's cool. I'm going to read to you. Um... Most of the time, people are going to join me and I have a Bible because you're probably doing something else. You're probably cooking, driving, uh, multitasking. You got your you got your phone on, you're watching this video, and you're doing something else. Or you could be watching the replay. A lot of people are going to be watching the replay because I know that I am called to women that are ambitious, successful, and they're working. So they're probably getting off work, driving home from work. But this is the time that works best for me. Okay, I'm going to have you for less than an hour because I have somebody coming to the house right at 6. So, less than an hour. Oh, come on. Hold on a minute. Uh-oh. We have a couple issues. Hold on. Technical. There we go. All right. Just in case you don't know me or if you've never seen me live before, my name is Sarita Foxworth. I am a author. I am a 13-time self-published author. I am a Christian life coach. I am a certified Christian life coach. Very important for you to know that. A lot of people throw around the word life coach these days and you're not even sure what that means, who you can trust. But I actually graduated from the Coaching and Positive Psychology Institute. Um, back in 2014, I went through their coaching certification program, and you can actually look that up. You can actually look up Valerie Burton Coaching and Positive Psychology Institute, and you will see that I'm talking about like a real established person who trained me as a life coach. And, um, and so, therefore, I can help you. Now, um, let me, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to jump into the topic at hand. I'm going to show you a couple of resources that will help you further. Um, and then I want to get to the points. Now, the post that I put up, I, I asked you, are you really ready for the man you're praying for? And I gave you three things to consider. But in my notes today, I actually have four things that I'm going to give you. So I'm going to give you four things to consider in really locating whether you are ready for the man you're praying for or not. Uh, but first, we need to get we need to get clear about a couple of things even before I dive in. We need to be on the same page. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on into the live stream. I was going to say the room. Glad to see you on tonight and happy Thursday. Father, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I thank you for the women that are going to be joining tonight or watching the replay. I thank you for them, Lord. It is a blessing, an honor, a privilege to minister to them in this way, to connect with them in this way. And I pray that you will send women here who have an ear to hear and a heart to receive what your spirit wants to impart into them through me as a vessel on today, God. I don't take it lightly. I pray that you will keep the women away who are not serious, who are just up here to invade the comments. But I pray that the women who truly need an answer from heaven, who truly need direction, they need encouragement, 
they need a word from you. I pray that those women will have their needs met as a result of watching this video. And I thank you for your anointing being upon the life of these women that are here. I thank you for your anointing being upon this live stream, even God, and that your will, your plan, your purpose will be fulfilled as a result of this sacrifice of time. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so are you really ready for the man that you're praying for? Number one, I want to define a couple of things just so that you can decide if you're in the right place listening to the right person or not. So number one, when I talk about the man you're praying for, I'm talking about a godly man because you are a woman of God who desires a godly marriage. Now, how do we know what defines a godly marriage? It is not defined by people's opinion or what you saw or what you think. It is defined by the word of God because everything it is that we believe God for and everything it is that we that we ask and request and everything, the foundation of our lives is the word of God, right? So we must always consult the word of God concerning every area of our lives, especially when it comes to heart matters, especially when it comes to love, dating, and connecting with a man, right? So what does the Bible say is a godly marriage? Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to refer you to where you want to go and read more, but I'm not going to read it right now because I have other scriptures I want to get to. But you can define a godly marriage in Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5, you will define a godly marriage. That's one place. Number two, another place, when you do a full study, when you have time, do a robust study and go to every scripture that speaks to a wife and every scripture that speaks to a husband. So, I mean, every scripture that gives instructions to women that are already married and every scripture that gives instructions to men that are already married. And then you will really see the heart of God. Another place you want to, I'm going to give you a third place real quick. Another place you want to look is that other godly couples not ungodly couples not carnal couples not now i'm let me let me preface let me i'm still helping you to identify if you're in the right place or not one thing about sarita a fox work everything that i say is going to be very very bold i'm gonna make a lot of black and white statements that you might not like or want to hear they're going to be black and white because they're going to be based on the uncompromised word of god i'm not going to make statements to appease your flesh or if you have a worldly mindset my hope and my goal is that even if you are in your flesh and you have a worldly mindset, you want to do better. You've been praying to do better. You ask God to help you to do better and to grow and to be more godly and Christ-like and you're in the right place. I do not have a ministry of condemnation, so I'm not going to make you feel bad, but I am going to help you to do better and to be more godly, to be more Christ-like, to live your life in alignment with the will of God, submitted to the word of God. So we always consult the word of God, not our emotions or what somebody else is doing or what some carnal person did say it out here because they pop the world because they think so you want to define a godly marriage based on the word you um you look at godly couples in the word of god all right and real quick even when i'm saying look at godly couples in the word of god don't twist the story of a couple or what happened between a man and a woman to make it fit your situation you want to be very, very careful about that because you will deceive yourself. If you read a Bible story and you say, oh, this is what happened there. This is what's happening with me. And because I want it so bad, I'm going to just make this say what that's called confirmation bias. Right. When you want to believe something. So you go and you find things that confirm what it is that you want to believe. That's not the same as if the spirit of God is actually confirming something for you. And you'll know it in your heart, by the way. You will know it in your heart. Is this really the Lord or is this just me? And if you're not sure, um, it's probably just you. Because <laughs> when God talks to you, don't you know it? We all know when God is talking to us, okay? We we like, yeah, that was God. Versus if you're like, I think that may have been. It probably wasn't. It probably was you. <laughs> okay. So, um... Now, there is a difference between God blessing you with a, a man, a relationship, and a husband versus the devil giving you a gift because the Bible says that Satan gives gifts, okay? And he gives, you can look around and see the devil out here giving people gifts. And you're saying, how come she can do whatever she wants and she's married? Okay, anybody can do whatever they want. And just because you get married doesn't mean it's God's blessing. Just because somebody says that is the Lord doesn't also mean it's God because people are, they either lying to themselves, okay, or they're just downright deceived. So just because 
uh, somebody get married before you doesn't mean that God is blessing them before you. It just means that they got married. It's, it's literal, right? Now, with that being said, you, woman of God, are waiting on God's blessing prayerfully. And if you're not, this is going to help you to consider waiting on God's blessing. Because when God's blessing is upon something, you are ensured success. You heard me right. When God blesses something, you are ensured success. Now, am I saying it's going to be perfect? No. But am I saying it's going to succeed? Yes, because God's blessing. If you understand that blessing is not just a word that you say when somebody sneezes, but there's power in the blessing of God. When the blessing of God is upon a thing, it will succeed. You can rest assured confidently that if God's blessing, his grace, his spirit, his anointing is upon the thing, it is blessed and it is going to succeed. What about all these Christian people that get divorced? I don't know if God blessed them. I don't know if that's God's blessing. They could be a Christian and still be operating outside of the will of God. How many Christians do you know that are saved and they do whatever they want with their mind, with their body, with their heart? How many Christian people do you know, y'all? That play with tarot cards. Okay, they ask you what your sign is, knowing that that's demonic. I'm not talking about baby Christians who don't know, no better. I'm talking about Christians who know they shouldn't be playing with the tarot cards. They shouldn't be talking about what somebody's sign and horoscope is. Um, they know they're not supposed to be wearing these crystals and these beads. You know, you know, you've already had that conviction and you do it anyway because you want to. So just because two Christian people get married and then they get divorced doesn't mean God bless their marriage. It doesn't mean, it, you know what I mean? So as for you, all right, as for you, woman of God, you want to focus on the word of God in all that you do. You want to be led by God's spirit and you don't want to define what's happening in your life based on what's happening in somebody else's life. That's called ungodly comparison. Now, moving on. Are you really ready? Let's get to my four points. I'm going to pull from... Uh, one of my books, I'm going to pull from, this is book number 12 that I have written, just in case you didn't know. Um, I am a self-published author. I have written quality books for women of God that desire marriage. I'm going to pull from Smart Dating Rules. Now look, you see that? That is the actual book. I'm showing it to you because I want you to just see um, that I have a quality book that I published versus just, you know what I'm saying, uh, people that say that they write books and they really, they really got a little pamphlet. I'll never forget. I paid $35. This was back in 2019. So inflation hadn't hit yet. Okay. 2019. I paid $35 for an ebook and it was junk. It was garb. It was garbage. I was like, what is this? And I didn't even mind paying $35 for an ebook because I was sewing it to the woman. But I was like, this is horrible. This is like, it's supposed to be an ebook. It's really just a, a download. It was a PDF download. It was not formatted, designed. It ain't got no cover, nothing. It was just like a document. And I was like, this is supposed to be a book. What is this? I write and publish quality books, okay? Hello, Lady V. I write in quiet seasons of singleness. You guys have seen this up on my page. All right, if you are experiencing prolonged singleness and you're in a quiet season with God, you want to grow in confidence in yourself and God, go ahead and get quiet season. This is the hardcover version, which actually right now all my hardcovers are sold out. But um, this is a full color version as well. You see the submission challenge. This is a devotional. Uh, it will bless your life. It is a deep look. It's a deep devotional. Okay. That's why I say this is a deep dive devotional. Most devotionals are short and sweet to the point. I have a devotional like that. I have a short, sweet, and to the point devotional, but this is a deep dive devotional because I really want you to go in. I want you to read, meditate, search the word, hear from God, do the work, okay? And it will help you if you're experiencing a quiet season right now while you're waiting for the man of God that you're praying for to find you, okay? This book will bless you, will carry you through. Um, all right, hello, Alicia. All right, so let's start, let's start with number one. I'm pulling out smart dating rules. I am in... Rule number six, spiritual maturity is a two-way street. I'm going to read just a little bit from page 49. But let's start with the first thing that you want to consider when you're thinking about, am I really ready, right? Are you really ready for the man you're praying for? Now, remember, we've already, we've already determined that you are a woman of God who is praying for a godly man because you want a godly marriage. You want a godly marriage, you want a marriage that glorifies the Father. A lot of people say that, but they, they really don't mean it. But I pray that you guys looking at me actually mean it. You want to glorify God in and through your marriage, okay? You don't want to just be married. 
All right. Um, number one, are you as spiritually mature as the type of man that you're praying for? Are you as spiritually mature as the type of man you're praying for? So you're praying for a man who is mature. He loves God. He serves the Lord. All of those amazing things. But are you as spiritually mature as that type of man? Because one thing that you probably have seen is that men that are spiritually mature, they want a spiritually mature woman. Men that are mature, like they are close to God. They are growing with God. They are serious about their walk with Christ. They want a woman that's like that too. They don't want some chick who's out here doing whatever because she's not adding anything to his life. She could look, however, but she's not adding, she's not bringing anything to the table that is going to help him to grow closer to the Lord. She's not bringing anything to the table that's going to help him to be the man of God that the Lord wants him to be, right? So, are you especially mature as the type of man that you're praying for? Here's how you can locate yourself in answering that question, okay? Now, you want to locate yourself and you want to identify what areas you need to work on personally, I'm going to take you to the scripture, okay, because again, this is not my opinion. This is the word of God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 26. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to read that, and then um, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about it a little bit more. Walking in the Spirit is the title of this um, 10 scriptures. And I'm reading in the New King James uh, translation. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the less of the flesh now pause for the cause just that first scripture will let you know are you spiritually mature are you filled with lust now if you're praying for a godly man and you yourself are struggling with lust let's say he didn't got delivered from that demon of lust and he now is walking in the spirit do you really think god is gonna bring you into his life so that you can cause him to backslide? Now, listen to what I just said. Do you really think that God is going to bring you, woman, filled with lust into a man of God's life who done already got delivered? And y'all know, okay, when a man is delivered from that demon, it is major. Okay, when he can control his body, it is major. Because the way that God created us, that whole sexual experience is so major for him. Was well, major for both of us, but you know what I mean. Men and women are created differently, and a man, when he has that personal revelation and he has gotten delivered from all of those demons, do you really think God is going to now send you His way if you are still struggling with that, so that you can cause him to backslide? God will protect His sons. God will protect his sons. God protects his daughters too. But a lot of y'all don't listen to the discernment that God was trying to protect you with. And that's why you ended up in the situation that you ended up in. For whoever was thinking that. Okay, so. <laughs> when you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, listen to verse 17. The, the flesh lusts against the spirit. You, you, you're working contrary to one another is what the scripture says. So if, if one of you is in the flesh and one of you is in the spirit, you're working contrary to one another. Verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery. Now, this is the list that I want you to check yourself off and really see what you need to work on on this list because you're praying for a man who is a godly man. You want a man filled with the Holy Spirit. You want a man on fire for God. You want a man who's going to lead his family and do devotionals. He's going to go to church. He's going to serve in the ministry. You want that kind of man, right? Now, let's go down this list because some of the things on this list really cause a lot of people to stumble. And when I say stumble, I mean, cause you just to be like, I can't do this. This is too hard. Or I don't see nothing wrong with that. 
It causes you to stumble because you choose not to submit to the word of God. But I encourage you to submit to the word of God, especially the specific things that God convicts you of. Because it's not only about getting married. Your life is just going to be better all around. You're going to have way more peace, way more joy, way more confidence. You struggling with insecurity? You wrestling with who you are as a woman? You unsure and unclear about who you are, what God wants you to do, how you look? not sure if you're good enough, it's probably because you have ignored the Holy Spirit when he has convicted you. If you listen to the Holy Spirit when he convicts you and you become and grow and mature into the woman he wants you to be, you are confident. You are. When you're living the life that you know God wants you to live, not perfect, but by all means, I am not perfect, but I can boldly and confidently sit here before you because there's no hidden or secret sins. There's no rebellious spirit happening over here. There's no God has convicted me, but I'm choosing to do X, Y, and Z anyway. There's none of that. All right, and, and the anointing will be there as well. It's very important. And for those of you who know you want to operate in your purpose, your calling, or maybe you started operating a ministry, but it has not taken off yet the way you want it to take off, it will take off when you... Listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and grow into the woman that God, he's trying to mature you to get you to a certain place and your ministry will take off. But when those people come to you, they need to receive from a pure spirit. You see, when the people are in front of you looking for a message and an answer, and they need direction. They need to receive from a pure vessel, not perfect, but pure. Okay, so let's go on this list together. Um, And actually... The New King James uses words like dissensions and heresies and lewdness. But I am going to open up a parallel in the, let me see which translation, the New Living Translation. Because it's going to uh, make it easier for you to understand what the Lord is actually saying here. All right, verse 19 in the New Living Translation says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality. Is that you? Impurity. Lustful pleasures. Idolatry. Okay, so for those of you who think it's okay to do yoga, it's not okay, you're wrong. It's idolatry. Um, now, you don't have to argue with me. Just go and do, you can just read. You can Google it and you can read. What is yoga? What is yoga? What are the origins of yoga? And it is crystal clear, right? It is so evident. It's not even nothing to go back and forth about. What is yoga? Go and look it up. <laughs> it's not just stretching because you can stretch without uh, doing idol uh, stances and idol worship, right? Look at who created it. I mean, it's just so it's just so simple that it's just wrong. And people just go through life just participating in stuff and they're wondering why you're struggling. You didn't let all these demons into your life, into your home, into your body, and you're wondering why you're having a hard time. Okay, anyway, idolatry, <laughs> sorcery, okay, witchcraft, wizards, um, something else I want to say about that, witchcraft, wizard, oh, warlocks, all of that stuff, okay, you need to get it out of your life, out of your system, don't participate, if it's in your, 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 your bloodline, your heritage, you cannot. Think that it is okay to mix all of this darkness in with your light and it's going to be all good. It's not going to be all good. You're going to have a hard, hard life. And you're going to wonder why nothing's working. I'm always intact. There's all this drama going around in circles because you have chosen not to turn your back on something that is clearly stated in the word that you should not participate in or let your kids participate in, by the way. Okay. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery hostility are you going off why are you going off and being so aggressive hostility is on his list quarreling stop arguing with everybody woman of god jealousy why are you jealous that she's married and got a man and got children and you don't you have to figure out why are you so focused on somebody else's life and not your own there's so much that god has for us to do to laser focus in on and who got time to sit around and worry about what she doing and surely I'm not jealous of what she got because I am blessed. Like, she's blessed, but I'm also blessed. Yeah, she married. I'm single, but I'm still blessed. She's blessed in different ways than I am. And glory be to God, because we are not the same woman, right? She is blessed in her life. I am blessed in mine. Who got time to sit around and be jealous of somebody else? I know I don't. 
Okay, outbursts of anger. Selfish ambition is when you strive after things in life and you put the things of God on the back burner. Like, you know you're supposed to be serving in the ministry, reading your Bible, spending time with God. You know you're supposed to be launching and starting things that are of God, right? Things that are birthed from your spirit and from the call of God that is on your life. But instead, you're focusing in on whatever else. You're chasing after dreams that God didn't give you. Dreams that you got because you're trying to copy somebody, be like somebody. Or maybe even dreams that you got just because the pride of life is there. The devil is like tempting you to focus in these other areas when you should be focusing on the kingdom. That's selfish ambition. Dissension. Now let's look up this word dissension because it says dissension in the New King James. It also says dissension in the New Living Translation. So let's just see. What is the definition of dissension? And let's see what Webster says. Webster says dissension is disagreement of oh, uh, contentious quarreling. So when you just are disagreeing with everybody, uh, there's a lot, it's a strong disagreement, um, especially within an organization. Ooh, that's what Cambridge says. So if you are breaking apart, God is trying to bring unity somewhere and you are behind the scenes gossiping, spreading lies, spreading rumors, and you are causing division in the body of Christ, you're causing division in your family. You're causing division with your friends. You know, that is what dissension is. Oh, and the next thing is division. It says it plainly. So the dissension, y'all don't know people that disagree with everything. You try to ex explain something to them or encourage them in the, in the Lord. You try to encourage them in the word. Uh, yes, London, this will be on my page. You try to encourage people and they want to disagree with everything. I'm like, how can you disagree when all I'm saying is encouragement? You disagree with my encouragement? I do. Because you da 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 da. Okay. Okay. I will zip my lips. Because who disagrees with somebody that's encouraging them? I'm like, you can do it. Believe in yourself. God is with you. I don't know, Sarita, because da, da, da. No, you know what? I will save all of my words of wisdom and encouragement for somebody else. Who wants to be encouraged okay you have like that decision is a work of the flesh is what the bible says okay envy now you know the difference between jealousy and envy is that jealous is when you just mad because of what somebody got that you don't have but envy is when you literally want what she got that is so obviously the devil that is so obviously the devil to say oh, she got this but i want this so i'm gonna try to get it or I'm going to try to, you know, take it from her. I'm going to go behind her back and try to take what she got, get what she has. That is just straight up darkness in the devil. There's nothing about God, Christ, love. It's so obvious that envy is of Satan. Drunkenness. Now, this is one of the hard ones. Uh, a couple of the hard ones that I have found after working with women for all of these years and years and years that I've been doing, over a decade, I've been working with women of God ministering to serving coaching teaching preaching over a decade um i have found that between sexual immorality between idolatry because it's so attractive to mix some of that witchcraft in with being a christian um i found that jealousy envy and then of course drunkenness is a hard one as well for a lot of women of god um you know if if the world and when i say the world i just mean just like science has proven right that after one drink your your senses are impaired one glass of wine why do you think you can have like 10 and it's it's okay if your senses are impaired or if you're feeling any type of intoxication why do you think god is okay with you ingesting that into your system when we got to preach the gospel to a dying world Apostle Paul said we need to be instant, in season and out of season. Somebody called me today out of nowhere asking for prayer. Now, what if I was in here throwing back some wine because it tastes so good? And I'm in here just a little bit inebriated. Not all the way, but just a little bit inebriated. It's okay to drink some wine. Come on. You have to be ready out here to minister. Now, I know some of you are like, I don't minister daily. Maybe God doesn't trust you to minister daily because you're so intoxicated. You got to stop with this weed smoke and thinking it's all good to have these edibles. It's not. You need to put this liquor down, put this wine down. Listen, now, as somebody who had to get delivered from these things myself, I understand. I understand. 
it's attractive. You want it. Feel good. You know, it's temporary. You think it's okay. Come on. Leave this stuff alone, woman of God. These things, you, you are supposed to be in the world, not of the world. But when you participate in the exact same experiences that the world participates in, what is the difference between you as a Christian, Christian and the world? It should be a clear difference. Okay? We have to be ready to minister. You need to be ready to serve. God is going to send you people who need you. And See, this is what I'm saying. You ain't got to be perfect. But you do need to be ready. It's simple and easy things like stop drinking. That's easy. Oh, what's the next thing to say? Wild parties. How many of y'all still going to the club? And you praying for a godly man. God bless me with a man of God. I want to get married. I want to God glorify marriage. And you still going to the club? It's in the Bible. I'm not making this up. It's not my opinion. The Bible says wild parties. Work of the flesh. And other sins like these. This is I'm reading it. Um, in the New King James, it says, what does it say for wild parties? It says, re revelries, revelries and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what we, I'm going to say this again. What did we say at the very beginning? You are praying. You're a woman of God. You're praying for a godly man. You want a God-glorifying marriage. Isn't that the kingdom of God? God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. You want the kingdom of God. You're praying for that. But yet you're doing all of these other things that it clearly says that you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when you compare yourself to that other woman that then got married already, if she is participating in these things, she don't have the kingdom of God in her home. She does not have the kingdom of God in her home. Don't deceive yourself and be envious and jealous of somebody who's out here living their life based on the world. And you think she 10 steps ahead of you and she's not. This is why it's not good to compare yourself. It does not profit you a lick. It don't profit you at all to compare yourself to somebody else and what somebody else is doing. You know what you should compare yourself to? The word of God. Compare yourself to Christ. If you want to compare, <laughs> compare yourself to Christ. That's the only thing that I compare myself to. The word. What does the word say? What did Jesus Christ do? How did he live? All right, sweetie, you got work to do. Not because of what she did. Not because she did this, 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 got married. Mm -mm. I got work to do because when I look at the word and I put my life next to it, now I can see, am I living the life that God wants me to live? Everybody's journey is different. Okay. Let me keep going. Um, so, after you look at that checklist, okay, and I don't want you to be condemned. I don't, anybody that receives from me really is not condemned. But you will locate yourself and know what you need to work on. And I'm going to pray as well to help, um, help you to get started, okay. Um, where are my notes? I need to be reading on page 49. Uh, the Bible tells us. Okay, that we can judge a tree by its fruits in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 27. Jesus also stated how important it is that we first examine our own lives, not from a place of condemnation, but to ensure we don't get so wrapped up pointing out to others flaws that we fail to acknowledge and work on our own. For this reason, to show fairness and balance, um... Uh, I walk you through it. So in this book, I walk you through how to examine if a man of God is truly a man of God. Okay. If he really is a husband material based on the Bible and also like where you are. So you don't say, well, I never meet a good man. And these, uh, there's, here's what I hear a lot. In the church, there's not a lot of godly men. They're at the church, but they're not godly outside the church. They do other things. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. But where are you? Woman of God. I understand that you're saying that in the church, these guys keep trying to sleep with you. Could it be because they're attracted to the spirit of lust that you have not gotten delivered from? Could that be it? Could it be that you're still meeting men at the club and you're wondering why? I met him at the club and he goes to church. You shouldn't be at the club. Could it be you? Could it be? It could be the lifestyle that you're living. That's why you're meeting the type of men that you're meeting. And now you're mad at God, blaming God, thinking ain't no good men out there. 
but really you are putting yourself in the devil's playground and wondering why you keep meeting men filled with the demon. Or maybe they're attracted. So, so I heard somebody say that a long time ago. Right? That they're attracted to the the demons. That, now, I'm not saying that's always the case. right? I'm not saying that every time you meet somebody that's like ungodly and filled with a demon, that that means that you have a demon. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, you know, I'm going to keep going and then it'll become more clear. All right. It'll, it'll become more clear what I am saying. Um, What do you need to work on person? Let me, let me go to number two. So that was number one. Number one was, are you as spiritually mature as the type of man that you're praying for based on the scripture? Nobody's opinion of you based on what the word literally just said in Galatians chapter five. Number two is... um. Uh, are you really ready for the man you're praying for? Number two is make sure that you are not stuck spiritually. So make sure that you're not stuck spiritually. Make sure that you are still growing spiritually because none of us are perfect, but you must be growing. You must not be stuck. You must not have your feet in cement. You must be moving forward in and with God um, to know that you're really ready. There are a lot of women uh, 40 and above who are set in their ways and you're so set in your ways that you're not even growing in God anymore and you're praying to God to send you somebody that you're not ready for because you refuse to mature you refuse to grow you didn't turn 50 but you're the same and God is trying to help you so that when he blesses you you don't mess it up The key in maintaining balance and understanding whether a person is spiritually immature or growing through progressive sanctification is the individual's continual desire followed by corresponding actions to grow in the fruit of the spirit. You need the continual desire. You need corresponding actions to grow in the fruit of the spirit. In other words, when a person is set in their carnal ways, they will operate in their flesh with no remorse or conviction to change. That's somebody set in their ways. It's not the same as somebody learning and growing, and maybe they haven't had a specific revelation yet. That's not the same. It's somebody who's set in their ways. They have no remorse. There's no conviction to change. They are cool spreading their legs for whoever they're in a relationship with. They are cool getting high, getting blow. I don't even know if people still say that, but they are cool going to the club, meeting men, going to this party over here to meet them a man real quick. They are okay with going off and cussing people out. There's no remorse. There's no conviction to change. Now, when a person is, when a person not only acknowledges their weaknesses in the flesh, but puts forth real regular effort towards growth, the Lord will assist and accelerate their spiritual growth. Do you hear that? God will not only assist you to grow and to get breakthrough, but he will accelerate that thing. It will not take you as long as you think it's going to take you. Man, I literally was just having a conversation with somebody about deliverance and how they've been going through something for months and months and months. And I'm like, why are you, what do you mean months? You went through deliverance. It doesn't take a year to get delivered. It doesn't. Not when you are seriously walking with God. You done went through deliverance ministry. Because when you go through deliverance ministry, they cast the devil out of you in a, like in a session. So if the devil is gone, he's gone. Is he gone or did they not cast it out? Now, I'm not saying that there's... Because sometimes there's like healing that needs to take place. Even after the demons that you need to heal. Okay. But if somebody is like, they still are struggling with a demon, and I'm talking about specifically like spirits here. Somebody's still struggling with a demon and spirits and all this stuff. How are you still struggling month after month after month? If power is really in the name of Jesus, and if you speak to a demon in the name of Jesus and he has to flee, he can't just stick around and say, no, I know you say Jesus, but I'm going to stay here. That's not the way that works. There's power in the name of Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus. You have that power on the inside of your born again spirit. Hello, Lap. 
And so therefore, when you are wanting to be delivered and when you're wanting to grow in the spirit and repent from carnality, God will help you and he will accelerate it. It does not take a thousand years to become a godly woman. It doesn't. Okay, so moving on. Um, That was number two. Okay, this is the key to identify if you're growing or if you're content in carnality, sin, and or brokenness. Carnality, sin, and or brokenness. All of those things are different, right? Y'all know the difference? Carnality is being in your flesh. Sin is when you are just doing stuff that you know, like. Um, these these are words to the flesh, but then there's other things that are like a sin, right? I would venture to say to you, though, that anything that the Lord talks to you about personally, anything he convicts you of personally, and you choose to rebel against God is sin. It's that sinful behavior. That's iniquity. God told you to stop. He told you to go in the other direction. Like, all of that is just, just no, God, I'm not going to do what you're telling me to do. How dare you? Do what God tells you to do because you're going to be blessed at the end of the day. I mean, come on. It's so much better just to obey God. It's not always easy to obey him, but it's so much better to obey him <laughs> when you know that, okay, this, this might be hard, but I'm going to obey God because at the end of the day, this is going to be so blessed. It's going to be well worth whatever challenges come my way because I'm obeying God. And by the way, God is not asking us to do nothing crazy like he did in the Bible days. Wasn't that Jeremiah he told to go prophesy to the people and they threw him in a muddy well? And he was like sinking in the mud and he left him there for like weeks or something like that. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, God God is not telling us to do things that like is so, when we read it in the Bible, we're like, that is crazy. God is telling you to go to church, okay, spend time in prayer, all right, serve in a ministry. I mean, I think we got it kind of easy these days, you know what I'm saying? Okay, moving on. Um... That was number two. Make sure you're not spiritually stuck. When you, If you are truly ready for the man you're praying for, you're moving forward in and with God. You're not stuck in place. Number three. <clears throat> number three is a good one. Okay, and number three is for the mature saints that are listening to me. All right, because everybody is not going to understand this or even want to receive it. But if you are a mature woman of God, number three is for you. Are your dating decisions counterproductive to what you really want? Are your dating decisions counterproductive to what you really want? Okay. You want to ensure that you are following the leadership of the Holy Spirit and growing stronger in the fruit of the Spirit and weaker in the works of the flesh. It is counterproductive to get into a close relationship with someone who shares the same sinful behavior and carnal mindset as you do. The man will distract you and keep you stuck in place. Likewise, you'll distract him, okay, and keep him stuck in place. As you both feed into each other's weaknesses and condone behavior unproductive to the spirit, not only will you be unable to make strides with God, but your relationship will not, your relationship will not suddenly become a God-glorifying one that leads to a blessed marriage that yields a reflection of the body of Christ. Y'all got that? I'm reading from Smart Dana Rose. When your dating decisions are counterproductive to what you're praying for, you're praying for a godly man, you're praying for a God-glorifying marriage, but you don't live a God-glorifying singleness life style. <laughs> like your single season is not glorifying God, but you're praying for a God-glorifying marriage. It's counterproductive. If you want a God-glorifying marriage, live a God-glorifying single life. We should see God being glorified all up and through your life. Are your dating decisions counterproductive to what you really want? Also means that if somebody shows up and they're so clearly not what you want, don't say yes. Don't exchange numbers with them. Don't go out with them. Don't be investing time and energy into them when they're so obviously not what you want. When you can clearly see that this man of God is like in this world. I mean, he is in the world, honey. I don't see Christ on him at all. Why would you sit there and get to know him and fall in love with his personality? Now you got a soul tie. If he is so obviously not the type of man who you can live in Ephesians 5 life with, don't waste your time. Are you going to have a lot of days where it's quiet and you're not going out with people? Yes, yeah, so? So what? 
quiet. It's better to have a quiet, peaceful single season than to have all these dudes like a revolving door of demons coming in and out of your life, your home, your bed, okay? Much better to have quiet peace and not end up backslidden, having to repent, having to break a soul tie, having to get healed like a seed and broke your heart because you got the devil. And the devil does not come in and say, oh, I'm going to just treat this, this woman as a temple, a vessel of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to treat her so good. Satan comes in to destroy you. He doesn't come in to love you. He comes in to destroy you. He wants to tear you down. He wants to tear you down as a woman, as a Christian, everything. So he can, he can just strip away the calling, the anointing, the glory. But he, he's wrapped up in this fine man. Who y'all personality just click. You get along so well. You have so much fun. He make you laugh. You love his personality. He got it going on. He got money. He fine. And it's just like a demon wrapped up <laughs> in all of that. And you're like, oh, this got to be God. I'm going to just pray through. I'm just going to ask God to deliver him. I'm going to hope it's all going to work out in the end. It is not. Heed my warning, woman of God. Heed my warning. Okay. Way too many women have I seen fall into that trap, including me, by the way. By the way, I have a series coming up. It's called Dating Deceptions. It's going to start next week. I don't know the day yet, but I'm going to be going live quite a bit um, now that I'm getting a little bit settled in. And I have a series called Dating Deceptions, and I'm going to cover all of that. It's going to be good. All right. Um, let me get to point number four, okay? And I'm going to wrap this one up because I got to go. Define your godliness. Not by opinion, not by religious activities or showmanship. You know, you do things so everybody can see how spiritual you are. Come on, stop that. But define your godliness by comparing your lifestyle to Christ. And I said that earlier. I didn't even realize I, I said it and I was coming back to that same point. Define your godliness by comparing your lifestyle to Christ's lifestyle. Okay. Um, you want a godly husband, start first with locating yourself with both honesty and grace. Okay, let me go and um, share a little bit more about this. This is going to be good. I feel like this whole thing is good, though. <laughs> uh, godliness is the equivalent of being like Christ. By the way, I'm not going to go down this whole list, but in this chapter in Smart Dating Rules, I give you some lists, some bullet points to really help you. Because a lot of people learn um, differently. So this is like a summary using the scripture. Works of the flesh and what they look like in today's language. Right? And then the fruit of the spirit and what they look like. Alright? A simple way to determine godliness is to examine and understand the life of Christ by conducting a thorough study of the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The attributes, characteristics, traits, and lifestyle of Christ should be our guide always to keep us on track. So to keep us on track is the life of Christ, not the life of some, uh, Shaniqua or Tasha or Denise. Okay, that is not what guys are like, oh, what is Denise doing? No, what have Christ done? Let's read this enough the Gospels and see what kind of lifestyle. Like, let's not even look, because we all know the miracles of Christ. But look at his lifestyle. Look at how he moves. Look at what the things that he said. Look at how he lives. What kind of lifestyle did he have? If you were to align your life and your daily decisions with the life of Christ and do a side-by-side -side comparison, how much overlap would you see? Do you have many similarities? In unique situations, do you employ the same thought process that Christ himself had? Mindset. Do you have a kingdom first perspective? Christ had a kingdom first perspective or are you husband first, marriage first, man first? You know how I know? Because he's an idol. He didn't take it over. You worship him. You don't worship God. Are you focused on and submitted to the will of God, even above your own personal will and desires? You want to be married? Nothing wrong with that. Beautiful desire. Keep that desire. It's called having faith. Believe God and have faith for marriage. But never allow that desire to lead your choices and your daily decisions 
what leads your choices and daily decisions, the, the word of God, the, the Bible, the kingdom of God, Christ in you, working through you, being a temple of the Holy Spirit, a vessel of the Lord to be used in these last days. Those are the things that guide your choices and your decisions. Not a man, one in one, getting one, keeping one, revolving your life around him. Not been there. Because you want the love, you want the marriage, you want to get to the end goal so badly that you invest and you pour yourself into this relationship. And then when it don't work, you regret it all. How many of y'all been there? I didn't invest in and pour myself and I didn't gave of myself. I didn't gave everything of myself. And it all crashed and burned because he became my God. He was an idol, false God. What do I mean by that? Put God to the side. He don't go to church. All right, fine. We're not going to go. I'm supposed to be studying my Bible, but I'm with him hanging out. I ain't even got time to spend in prayer like I did when I was single because now I'm in a relationship. Just because you're in a relationship means that God goes on the back burner. I'll never forget one time I disappeared from Instagram because, you know, I go through seasons. I be busy. I was off of Instagram one time. And, you know, when I come up here, I teach, I preach. This is not for fun. This is business. It's ministry all wrapped up in one. Somebody said, oh, you were gone. I thought you were away because you were in a relationship or getting married or something, she said. And I was like, you think that I am not going to teach and serve and minister to women because I'm in a relationship? That doesn't speak to me. That speaks to your mindset of how a woman's life changes once she has a man. How my life changes once I have a man does not mean that I can't. I don't serve God anymore because I got a man now. I don't teach, preach, minister. I'm only doing this because I ain't got no man. Do you only do the things you do because, I mean, do you serve in the ministry only because you don't have a man? And once you get a boyfriend, you're going to stop? Prayerfully not. Do you go to church only because you want to meet a man there? And then if you don't meet a man, you're going to stop going to church? I hope not. All right. So if you want a godly husband and if you are trying to determine if you're ready or not, you have to look at your lifestyle and you have to be honest with yourself. Okay, you have to be very, very honest. I'm going to wrap up with this. Um, when it comes to modeling Christ in love and dating relationships, godly dating is evident when the kingdom of God is a priority in the individual's life. And when romantic relationship choices are based on the will and desires of God. How Christ will handle himself in a relationship is exactly how we should govern ourselves. Christ would remain holy and not fornicate. Christ would prioritize his service to God while also making time for love. Granted, Christ was called to a life of singleness, but if he had the option to get married, he would still prioritize the kingdom of God even as he made room for marital love. Likewise, you and the man you're dating should still spend time with the Holy Spirit in prayer and worship, Study the scriptures for daily understanding and application and serve people to bring them into the kingdom of God in your own way. A spiritually mature person does not throw their entire walk with God in the toilet once they are seriously dating. <laughs> Christ himself would not operate that way. That is the true definition of godly dating. Okay, now all of these Christian cliches. Godly dating is dating God's way. How would Christ date? Let's think about that. If Christ were with you, when you along with this dude it is that you with right now, would Christ be cool with what y'all are doing? He's with you anyway. Whether you acknowledge his presence or not, he's there because the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. So being that Christ is with you, is it okay? The stuff that you and nobody are doing when y'all are spending time together and getting to know each other, is Christ cool with your behavior, with your interactions with him. Is Christ cool with your dating life? Is he okay with how you're living your life? I'm running out of time. I got six minutes left. I'm going to answer these questions and I'm going to go. Go to the link in my bio to grab your copy of Smart Dating Rules. Books are shipping tomorrow. By the way, I ship books every other day. All right. I try to ship books Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sometimes, um, depending on how many orders come in, I might ship them four times a week. But books are shipping tomorrow. So if you get your order in today, if you get your order in by 4 a.m. Eastern, 
because I usually start packing books at 6 a.m. Eastern. Um, your book will ship out tomorrow with tomorrow's batch. If not, it'll ship out on... I'm going out of town. It'll ship out on Wednesday next week. Okay. Get Smart Dating Rules. Also, check out Quiet Seasons of Singleness. All right. This is a 30-day deep dive devotional. If this Bible study bless you, this book will bless you as well. Go to the link in my bio and grab your copy. Lastly, I'm going to look at the question real quick, but I got to make this last quick announcement. If you need to write your first book and you don't know where to start, start at the book writing challenge. The doors to the book writing challenge are open. I'm going to talk more about that in a separate live stream that I'm going to do just about book writing. But if you know you need to write your first book and you don't know where to start, you don't know how to self-publish, you don't know how to organize, structure your book, you don't know what to do when you have writer's block, um, you don't know how much to charge for your book, you don't know how to get it designed, go to the link in my bio that says the book writing challenge and save your seat. Okay, payment options are available and um, the book writing challenge starts in September, but I have something special I'm going to give to the ladies even before September starts. So that's that. Now, I'm going to answer this question until my doorbell ring. Once my doorbell ring, I got to go. Because <laughs> I have somewhere I'm supposed to be at um at 6. For those of you who've been here the whole time, can you let me know in the comments what has blessed you about this live stream? Oh, I can't open up this. What has blessed you about today's topic? Are you ready? Have you identified if you're actually ready for the man you're praying for or not? Um, If you are ready, I want to know. If you're not, what specifically do you think the primary thing you need to focus on is? Okay, so Kay says, uh, what are your thoughts on dating a gentleman who lost a spouse a year and a half ago? Is this risky? My concern is becoming a rebound. Why y'all always ask questions that are so off topic? Somebody lost their spouse a year ago. If you're concerned with being a, a rebound for him, then just don't do it, right? Because if, if that... It, like that shouldn't be a concern. Why are you con are you concerned because of something he's done or said, or are you just in general concerned about that? Now, if you're just having a general thought about that, then move forward and just see how he treats you, how he talks about her, how he's living his life. Right? Move forward and get to know him. But if you're getting to know him and there's stuff that he's saying and doing that's making you feel uncomfortable, then that is a red flag. And what happens when you see a red flag? You're supposed to stop. Do not pass go. All right, so it's, it's, it's not complicated. You know what? Um, a lot of these questions that you guys have, you already know the answer to. A lot of the things that you guys want to know about the person you're dealing with, you already know the answer. You just want to hear somebody else say it. I'll say it, though. You already know what to do, literally. You got the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God on the inside of you. And the wisdom of God, usually, he's already been talking to you. And you just, you get confirmation, but you already know what to do. Okay, yes, this live will be posted. Um, Okay, so that's the queen said, help me to see where my focus needs to be on stuff. Okay, still in preparation, paying debt off, looking to buy a house. Okay, all right. Being stuck in your way, so I swear you got to deal with me on this. Mm -hmm. She said, Linda said, I feel like you just put me in check. You're so funny. Um, Learning to go and wash clothes. Girl, I'm talking about spiritual things. You're talking about all this natural stuff. I'm three, four, three. I think might have a little more work to do. God has been telling me that. Listen, y'all. A lot of these natural things, you don't need to focus on. Can I give you an example? Because there was a season in my life where I didn't have to wash my clothes because it was too inconvenient and I didn't feel like it. It was probably like a good year and a half I didn't wash clothes. What did I do? I hired a, one of them clothes services where you leave your clothes outside and somebody pick it up, wash it, fold it, and bring it back. So you could be focusing on, I need to figure out how to wash this laundry. Well, really, your husband might not mind paying the $75 to get the clothes washed. You might be focusing on cooking when your husband might be a chef. Like he might be a man who loves to cook and you focusing on cooking. You need to focus more on the spiritual stuff than the natural stuff. It's not the natural stuff that will prevent God from blessing you. It is the spiritual stuff because the call of God, the kingdom of God, these last days, this ministry of Christ Jesus is so significant. It is so important. You worried about uh, finances and paying off your debt when when the, the money is coming. Like the money will flow into your life. Those of you who have been in your career for more than 20 years, you're a little bit older, you've been working a long time, you can clearly see that money comes. 
right? Money grows. You make more money the longer you stay in your career, your profession, you get promotion, whatever. You start to make more money. You don't need to chase after. Now, I do understand wanting to have your finances together, so that's not what I'm saying. Everybody needs financial literacy, for sure. Nothing wrong with growing in financial literacy. But what I'm saying is don't let that be your primary uh, focus. I need to pay off debt so I can get ready for a husband. When really, you're going to pay the debt off. Like, it's going to get paid. Focus more on the spiritual um, aspects of who you are as a woman, as a godly woman, as a Christ follower. Focus more on ministering, winning souls. Focus more on those things. And God will send you all the money you need to pay down your debt. You can take some financial literacy classes here and there. But don't let that be like the main thing, right? Um, Jen said, thank you for feeding us the word. It will mold and shape us. You're welcome. Um, so a lot of you are saying feeling stuck spiritually. <clears throat> People who remove from my life is my better man. For sure. Hello, Zakia. You're late, girl. I'm done. I'm wrapping up. I think my doorbell is going to ring any minute. Oh, yep. I see the person outside right now. Um, okay. I'm going to say this quick prayer. And then I'm going to go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every woman here who has heard from you. She has discerned your voice, your spirit, and your leadership on today. I ask that you give her everything she needs in her life. Support, resources, encouragement, strength, even God, to answer the call to do what it is you're leading her to do and to become the godly woman that you desire for her to become. I pray that even as she has enlightenment and this understanding spiritually into who she is and where she needs to go, that you will equip her and make it easy for her to grow in godliness, to grow and be more Christ-like. And that I pray, Lord, that as a result, you will send her her husband not many days hence, that you're also maturing him that you're growing him spiritually, and that he is also becoming the man of God that you need him to be as the leader of his home, as the covering of their family. And um, Lord, I thank you for bringing them together quickly in these last days so that we can do a great, great work in your kingdom, reflecting Christ in this dying world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So, she ain't on her car yet. But just keep that in mind, okay, woman of God. And I'm going to go ahead and end this, and I'm going to reshare this broadcast. Um, if you're not on my email list, get on my email list so you'll know the next time I'm going live. I, I try to send an email. I might do a post, but I usually will make sure I send an email to let everybody know within the hour that I'm going live. Um, also, I do special things, special announcements. You know, I opened up the book writing challenge a week and a half early for the people on my email list. I had a whole interest call with them and everything. So there's stuff that I do behind the scenes if you're on my email list that I don't do on Instagram. So you want to get on it, go to SaritaFoxworth.com, get on my email list. Uh, if you unsubscribe and you don't get my notifications, that's on you. <laughs> but as long as you stay subscribed and you open my emails, you will be abreast. You'll know before anybody else knows about what is going on in this world of singleness and faithful marriage and things of that nature. Um, don't forget, go to the Love of Miracles Boutique. Get your book order in. Books are shipping tomorrow. If not, they'll ship on Wednesday. If you are located uh, in the U.S., if you're international, you have to go to Amazon to order your book. I don't do international shipping right now. And, uh, yeah, join the book writing challenge. So I can help you to, to write and publish your book. You're welcome, everybody. God bless you. And... Keep me in your prayers. Can y'all pray for me? Can I? That's my prayer request. Pray for me. Pray as you're led. Oh, pray for me in tongues. That's even better. Pray for me in your heavenly prayer language. Because then you're praying the perfect will of God over my life. Instead of just like your opinion. <laughs> pray for me in the spirit. Pray for me in tongues. Um, I would greatly appreciate your prayers. And you guys have an amazing, amazing night. <laughs>